Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live with me, AC Benewanyami. We are live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra and also streaming on your Facebook page at Top Stories this afternoon. A 10-member emergency team made up of representatives from each of Ghana's 10 regions is to manage government's $1 million per constituency fund until the three development authorities are ready. As the world celebrates Father's Day, 3FM and ICANN Innovations have celebrated Ghanaian fathers for their contribution to the lives of their children. Fathers who took part in various contests including uh, cooking were given various prizes. Also coming up, the Amasaman Divisional Police Command is on a manhunt for two carjackers who escaped uh, arrest while attempting to sell a stolen taxi near Ajen Kotoku in Accra. And in international news, 57 people have been killed in a catastrophic forest fire in Portugal. Government says most of the dead were trying to flee in their cars. Several firefighters were among the 59 people injured. So we have all these stories plus the latest from the world of entertainment sports. Uh, stay with us now to our very first story. And the Ministry uh, for Special Development says a 10-member emergency provisional team will manage the $1 million per constituency fund until the three development authorities are ready. The team made up of 10 representatives from each of the 10 regions will work for the success of the $1 million per constituency infrastructure for poverty eradication project. Eva Atiboka has more. Per the implementation outline, the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority will soon be renamed Northern Development Authority to take care of the northern part of the country. The Middle Belt Authority will also be responsible for work in the Middle Belt, while the Coastal Development Authority's role will be in the coastal areas of the country. These authorities would be responsible for the disbursement of the $1 million to the 275 constituencies and implementation of projects. The minister hinted the bill for creation of the authorities is before cabinet for approval. The fund will therefore be managed by the Ministry for Special Development Initiatives and the Ministry of Finance. The two ministries will work with a provisional 10-member teams from each region. It's likely we may not be able to even establish the development authorities before the end of the year. And if we should wait, it means we cannot do the implementation. So this 10-member team is moving to the constituency to have the consultation with the stakeholders. They will interact with the chiefs, the NGOs, the civil society, teachers, the market women, the assemblymen. They will bring them all together under one roof and then they will all discuss at length which are their priorities. Regional administrations and metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies, MMDAs, have also have advisory roles to play. The 10 member team is going to work with SADA because SADA is already in place. And all the plan that SADA has, we don't know whether they actually consulted the people before they have all those plans. So when they go to SADA and SADA move with them to their constituencies, if the same thing that they have in, fine, then they will bring it and we start the implementation. So with the issue of the Northern Development uh, Authority, we don't have much problem. The already existing Savannah Accelerated Development Authority, SADA, will also work with the team. When the bill is passed, Upper East, West and Northern regions will form the Northern Development Authority. The Middle Belt will comprise of the Bono Ahafo, Ashanti and Eastern regions, while the Volta, Greater Accra, Central and Western regions will form the Coastal Belt. In a related development, officials uh, of the Ministry for Special Development Initiative says uh, the one million per constituency fund could be given out as soft loans to constituents for businesses. However, some MMDAs are warning the objective of the fund could be derailed. Eva Tiboka once again reports. 
The Sector Minister Hawa Kumsin spelt out disbursement and project implementation modalities of the annual $1 million city equivalents to each of the 275 constituencies to the stakeholders. The funds will be disbursed through the Ministry of Special Development Initiatives and the Ministry of Finance, the 10 member team. They will work with the contractors to execute projects effectively and efficiently and these people will be absorbed into the development authority. Explaining to the stakeholders, Hawakumsin emphasized 70% of key projects to be implemented under the fund would focus on a factory in each and every district, one village, one dam, food storage facilities, markets and water and toilet facilities. The remaining 30% are constituency priority projects based on needs assessment. Hawakumsin, however, stressed flexibility in the project preferences and emphasized the fund could be given out as soft loans to constituencies. And then we can also use it for poverty eradication, soft loans to men and women, but of course they will be paying it back. This did not go down well. With some of the DCEs, they questioned the vision of the fund. I think this one million equivalent is supposed to be from the capital expenditure, or the capital budget, and it's supposed to be funding capital expenditure. Looking at the lending aspect, depending upon the reason for which we are giving out these loans, I'm just thinking, is it going to fit the purpose of the capital nature? The minister warned MMDAs and constituency executives against misuse of the funds, saying stiffer sanctions await offenders. Regional ministers have also promised effective monitoring and supervision. They are asking all Ghanaians to join hands to make the program a success. Also still staying on the one million per constituency project, stakeholders at a meeting on implementation of a project, say six months of the NPP administration, it's enough to, uh, for takeoff of a project. Eva Timboka reports project proposals and implementation plans are ready for the 2017 fiscal year. Minister for Special Development Initiatives, Hawa Kumsin, met with regional ministers, members of parliament, MMDA chief executives and constituency executives. She confirmed the fund is ready for disbursement. The minister spelled out disbursement and project implementation modalities of the annual $1 million CD equivalents to each of the 275 constituencies to the stakeholders. She emphasized the 70% of the infrastructure are government priority projects and the other 30% will cover constituency priority projects based on needs assessment. The priority areas of the governments are the one district one factory one village one dam water for all and then toilet facilities the minister hinted that a team to undertake the projects is in place though the team is yet to start consultations ministers and mmda chief executives say it is not too late Although it's late June and per the implantation calendar, stakeholders and beneficiaries have only six months to draw their project implementation plans. For the fund this year, they say they will meet timelines. They are ready. We can start tomorrow. I mean, we have the human resource in the assemblies to, to do this, so it will not be a problem at all. They are so excited about the whole initiative. The funds will be at the ministry. When the needs assessment have been done and uh, proposals have been written, it will go through the tendering or the procurement process. Then you will then apply for the funds to be used for that particular purpose. All the districts are already doing the needs assessment. But as the minister mentioned, when they come, we only take them to the communities to just revise what we have done, to add the political touch to what we have done already, so that the program can move on. Actually, we are ready. If you have the theory right, if if the research is done well and then the homework well settled, disbursement and implementation shouldn't take long. The Minister for Special Development Initiatives, Hawa Kumsin, has asked the public to support the One District, One Factory project. She says uh, the focus should be on measuring the success of a project after four years. 
The one district, one factory, the one village, one dam, and the one million dollar each to all 275 constituencies are special projects towards reducing overall poverty. There is, however, public anxiety over the implementation of these projects. Some critics are of the view that the one million per constituency, one district, one factory, one village, one dam came as separate projects in the party's 2016 manifesto. The Minister of Special Development Initiatives, Mavis Hawakumsin, however, denies this. During the campaign, the President, His Excellency and the Vice never mentioned what the one million dollars per constituency was to be used for. They said we'll be allocating one million equivalent to every constituency. And then we can also have a, a, a factory and a dam. So at the end of the day, we realized that oh, this money, part of the one million can be used for this uh, projects in the constituency. Some analysts have also questioned why some constituency projects seemed to be captured under the one district, one factory policy. Howard Kumsin explained, outlining the linkages among metropolitan municipalities, districts and constituencies. We mentioned district, but the fund is for the constituency and the constituency is under the district. It's all aiming at the same thing factory or one million is for the people. The district factory is for the people at the constituency. The one million is for the people at the constituency. She added that metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies with more than one constituency will have their factories cited in relation to the availability of raw materials. We we'll make sure that we we'll situate the factory where both constituencies will benefit from the factory and then we also ensure that it will not create any uh, conflict in future. And this money, the one million dollars. She called for support in implementing the projects. And some MMDA say the one million dollars package for constituencies could affect other funding windows to the assemblies. They have also expressed concerns about the irregularities and sustainabilities of a fund, taking into consideration experiences with other funds. These came out when the Minister for Special Development Initiatives, uh, Hawa Kumsin, embarked on a tour uh, to explain the modalities of a fund to the assemblies. The sector minister outlined areas the funds could be used and those that would amount to misuse and misappropriation attract stiffer sanctions. You can use not more than 1% for training and capacity building activities. A system will be developed to track the spending of funds at the constituency level. Procurement of goods and services will be done in collaboration with the RCC. Procurement of goods and services will follow the procurement acts and public financial management laws. However, some MMDAs wanted to know the regularities and sustainability of the fund. Common fund, everybody here agrees it doesn't count. So when are we going to get this particular money, which are for this one, it will come because the way we are talking, is it coming from mass or the same is bringing this money. But the sector minister explained in an interview that the one million fund to each constituency is adequately planned and sustainability is not a problem. Others were also worried the fund might affect the allocation of other funds to the municipal, metropolitan and district assemblies. This one million dollars that is coming is quite a good amount. But is it not going to affect the other sources of funding that has been coming to the district? One million dollars as a tough loop. Is it coming to supplement the mass log one or when our committee decides to use it for loops, the mass log will not come again? I promise you the mass log will come. But maybe the mass log may not be enough. The minister explained the fund is rather aimed at reducing pressure on the common fund and other statutory funds for sustainable development. 
You're watching Midday Live with me, AC Benewanyami. Right now, though, let's move on to some other stories. And the Amasaman Divisional Police Command has mounted a manhunt for two uh, people who escaped arrest uh, at Kofi Koi on Friday, June 16. The two, together with Isaac Ako and Ebenezer Ni Soa, were attempting to sell a stolen taxi at Kofi Koi near Ajen Kutuku on Friday. The police action followed a tip-off around noon Friday, June 16. According to the police, the Ajen Kotoku District Command was hinted of possible illegal car sales at Kofi Koi. The police proceeded to the location, but two of the suspects, Joe and Honesty, upon seeing them, bolted. The police managed to arrest 30-year-old Trotra driver Isaac Ako and a driver's mate, Beneza Nu Soa. The Hyundai Gotez taxi with registration number GX548914, which the suspects were attempting to sell, was also retrieved. One of the suspects told the police in his caution statement that the taxi was snatched from the owner at Abekala Pass, but the other claimed it happened at Kofroidia. A close look at the taxi revealed it was registered by one Rosemary Opon of Teshi Nungwa Estate, but operated under the Ewutu Senior East Municipality. Police strive on information. Like that somebody went to the district commander, Ajay Kotoku, Mr. Uh, Super Mr. George Kuma, and he, he moved on it, and these people were arrested with the, the, with, with the vehicle. So we want the public to do the same. Nobody will just give them out, no. No, our job, police job, is the job of integrity. We will not give them out. The police is therefore urging the public, especially those who fall victims, to car snatching to contact them and assist in investigations. Three suspected persons uh, in the murder of the chief of Ademan in the Gawes municipality have been charged with conspiracy to commit crime and murder. The three, Ni Kwe Koti Musa Mohammed and Rahim uh, Yakubun, were arrested in another attempt to attack a targeted victim in a hotel. The police say the three were earlier involved in the murder of the development chief of Ademan in the Amasaman municipality, Ni Tete Saban. The three on Thursday, June 8, stormed the stool house at Ademan where Ni Tete Saban and his kinsmen were performing annual rituals to lift the ban on drumming and noise making. The suspects are said to have fired indiscriminately and also inflicting machete wounds on their victims. The deceased was chased by the suspects, according to the police, into a room of a relative and shot dead. One of the victims who sustained gunshot wounds, was treated and discharged, and another is still receiving treatment at the hospital. The police said whilst investigation was ongoing, the three had gone to the hotel where the would-be victim was lodging ostensibly to attack. But luck ran out on them where they were identified by the staff leading to their arrest. Two unregistered motorbikes said to have been used in the deadly attack were retrieved by the police from the hotel. Investigations are still ongoing and anyone, any individual or group of persons found to be involved in the murder of Ni Tete Saban will definitely be smoked out. The police also called on the public to assist in identifying other members of the gang that murdered the Ademan chief. A week after the major Mahama's burial, the fight against mob action continues. The Justice for Mahama movement organized a walk for late Captain uh, Mahama, which was marred by Saturday morning rains with low turnout. Saturday morning's rain marred the walk for justice with low turnout, but the group still chanted, Mob justice is no justice. Mob justice must stop now. Mob justice must stop now. Organizer of the event, Kwame Butchwe, said the rains could not deter them from fighting for justice. He noted the group will petition the Attorney General's department in the coming weeks. We are calling for people to direct their anger from revenge and rather seek redemption. Redemption of the system that has failed in protecting him when he was on his job. The same system that has failed a lot of people who have lost their families, their friends, their husbands, their brothers, sisters to lynching or mob injustice as we would call it. 
Kwame Butchwe also called on the police to improve its response time on issues of lynching by way of community policing. We realize that a lot of the problems are problems of policing. Um, when you speak to the ordinary person on the street and you ask them why they resort to mob injustice or lynching, they will tell you it's because of the lack of confidence in some of the state institutions, like the police for instance. Among others, the group is tasking Parliament to pass laws to address the evil canker of lynching. NCCE has meanwhile been implored to educate the masses on the need to fight injustice in the appropriate way. They called on Ghanaians to end mob action now. Mob justice must stop now. Mob justice must stop now. And today is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all fathers out there and here at TV3. 3FM and Icon Innovations have celebrated Ghanaian fathers for their contribution to the lives of the awards. The fathers who took part in the various contests, including cooking contests, were rewarded uh, with goodie bags from uh, guest father and actor Ramsey Noah. Brenda Lutroth reports. Being a father comes with so many attributes, like having an understanding heart, being a source of strength and support right from the very beginning of your ward. In this part of our world, fathers are not much talked about due to the shirked responsibilities of a few. 3FM, as part of activities to celebrate fathers, has organized the 3FM's Father's Day Hangout to help strengthen the bond between fathers and their wards. The fathers who came with the awards took part in cooking contests, athletics and indoor games. Other side attractions included bouncy castles, musical chairs, sack race and soccer. Some fathers shared their fatherhood stories. They are very happy with me because the way I direct them, the way I counsel them, they like me, they like me. So I'm very happy to be a father. The children are so, you know, uh, I call them little, uh, big people in little body. So if you have a relationship with them and you nurture them well, they are so special. Father of three, Thomas Kwakopum, who came with his son, Richfield Kwakopum, couldn't hide his love for his son. It's not easy being a father, but you need to make time to be with your children. And I travel often, but then most of the time when I'm around, I make time and go out to have fun with my children. Talented child DJ, DJ Switch, stole the show with her Father's Day mixtape fusion of old and new school music. <laughs> Seasoned Nollywood actor and guest father, Ramsey Noah, wild audience presenting goodie bags from Onga to fathers who won various contests. He shared fond memories of his children and urged fathers to take full responsibility of their wards to correct the stereotype and perception that fathers are irresponsible. Life is all about family. Life is all about responsibility. Men, like, you got to own up to it at some point in time in your life. You just have to. You have no choice, except you don't want to leave a legacy behind. The event was in partnership with ICANN Innovation, with support from Fanmax, Onga and Longreach. Back with more stories. Please stay with us. When the news breaks, reporters and anchors broadcast it. Analysts will talk about the impact of this on society. But current affairs will set the agenda for policymakers to implement it. This is what we do on Agenda. It's sharp, authentic, and hard hitting. My name is Deborah Kwabla. Join us as we set the agenda. Agenda now shows on Sundays at 3 p.m. only on TV3 and is supported by 3FM 92.7 Accra. A news uncovered style and professionalism must be someone you can trust, someone you can relate to, someone you can bond with, and with real experience. That is who we are. That is who we are. That's who we are. That's who we are.
everything you need to know. Captivating. Reliable, credible, and breaking news. All at your fingertips. Who's found out Samoa Gian? Super finish! Being on top of the news has never been easy. Visit us at www.3news.com for all your reliable news. 3 News, news at your fingertips. Ghana. And this is Ghana's most beautiful. This year's Ghana's most beautiful queen is about to take this brand on a whole new level by representing brand Ghana in ways you've never seen before. Who oh, would it be? Ghana's most beautiful coming soon on TV3 and is brought to you by Carnival Strawberry, Madar Powdered Soap, Onga Tablet and Seasoning, Enapa Mackerel, Remy Spices and Royal Drinks. There are lots of amazing stories out there. What we do on News 360 is to bring to you the most compelling news by teasing out the right pieces that bring the stories to life. My job is to present to you the news in the most gripping manner and asking the critical questions that bring out the needed detail out of the stories. My name is Alfred Okanse. Join me on News 360 Monday through to Friday 7 p.m on air and online only on TV3. Thanks for staying with us. And Minister for Inner City and Zongo Development, Boniface Abubakar Sadiq, says government is committed to develop the various Zongo communities across the country. Interacting with Zongo, Zongo residents in Sunyan, uh, in the Bonahafu region, the minister said his ministry is waiting for parliamentary approval of funds allocated to the ministry to start its projects. Education, sanitation, infrastructure, cultural development and employment for inhabitants of Zongo communities across the country are some areas the development fund will be invested into. The Minister for Zongo and Inner Cities explained his ministry is awaiting parliamentary approval of 218 million cities allocation for planned projects to be executed in the Zongo communities. Those people live in the Zongo's pay tax. They help in the development of the country. So His Excellency the President said, we must include the excluded in our development. If the inner city and Zongo people have been excluded in development for his government, he must create a ministry to help in including them in the development. The Bonahafu Regional Minister Asuma Treme was hopeful the initiative will improve the lives of people living in Zongo communities. 27 out of a total of 38 workers at the Savalugu Municipal Assembly on Friday, June 16, failed to show up to work for fear of their lives. Some protesters on Wednesday and Thursday stormed the office of the Municipal Assembly, demanding the resignation of the Municipal Chief Executive. 
The coordinating director for Savelugu, Brahima Basintele, confirmed the number but said he had placed calls to the absentees to report to office at the time of our visit. At least 20 police officers had been stationed at the assembly premises to prevent unforeseen encounters. Some protesters on Wednesday and Thursday, May 14 and 15, stormed the office of the municipal assembly, demanding the resignation of the municipal chief executive. The group climaxed their protest by locking up the main gates of the assembly, preventing workers' entry. It took the presence of the police and military squad to disperse the angry youth after they had engaged in a gun battle with the police before the arrival of the military to calm the situation. Meanwhile, a press conference had been held by a group concerned citizens of Savelugu about the appointment of the MCE. Speakers at the conference urged residents of Savelugu and Nantong to give the MCE a chance to prove himself. I'm calling on all the people who applied or who showed their interest in this particular position. I mean, political future is at stake in this particular case. If my call is right, it is therefore for us, all of us, rise up to this particular occasion to bring peace and unity to our constituency. The group also cautioned the aggrieved parties to eschew violence and called for unity in the NPP. In other news, 3FM, in collaboration with weight management company fat to fit has commenced Season 4 of the 60-Day Fitness Challenge. The 60-Day Fitness Challenge is aimed at helping participants to lose weight through a natural way. The one-hour exercise, which started and ended with aerobics at the Aviation Social Center, was aimed at improving the health of participants. The exercise was also used to create a bond between listeners and staff of 3FM, a subsidiary of Media General. Events manager Kenneth Addo said this season will also engage participants from Ashanti and Western regions. In the near future, we, we look at you know having a whole session at the Independence Square or the Accra Sports Stadium. The CEO of Fat to Fit, Akotoda Gross, was thrilled with the success of the fitness program since its inception and encouraged the public to take advantage of the 60-day challenge. You know, losing weight is not easy. It's tough. But because of the prizes, there are weekly prizes. Those who lose weight in the week would get some you know, vouchers to go for massages, for example. At the end of the whole 60 days, the one who has lost the most weight will be crowned the biggest weight loser. Experts and trainers of the challenge will take participants through a climbing section, body stretches, aerobics and healthy eating habits. Some of the participants shared their experience. I joined to lose weight and then keep fit. I know that in China it's mandatory, even when you go to work, they have time for exercises before you start work actually because you need to be alive to produce for your dear nation. Well, good one there, losing weight the natural way. Experts say exercising is the best option for staying healthy. But is today's exercising for keeping fit or for socialization? Akosia Sono brings a report on the modern trend of exercising from the Ibri Mountains. Experts recommend walking as a simple, free and the easiest way to get more active, lose weight and become healthier. Jogging is also considered as a form of exercise which is ideal for people of all age and caliber, including pregnant women. When you are in labor, it makes you to deliver easily. On Saturdays, <laughs> as early as 5 a.m., hundreds of people often gather at the base of their Bree Mountain, then walk or jog from Ayi Mensa to the Pediasi Lodge, which is about 5 kilometers. But has this exercise been swayed from its original intent of keeping fit? Well, some participants say it is an opportunity to transact business, make new friends, and probably meet future spouses. Yeah, there are a lot of people here, yeah, so you can meet your partners. We will watch and we will still keep fit. <laughs> Maybe I'm here to find my hair. <laughs> some of the men say it is a place to impress ladies with their muzzles. There are others who seize the opportunity to unite with family members whom they have not seen during the week. It is also a photo opportunity for social media patrons. 
Surprisingly, after all the activities, the environment is left clean except a few areas. Patrons call for the dustbins to be placed at vantage points to improve sanitation in the area during the exercise. So if we have an organized body who can provide us with bins alongside so that people could drop their litter in. Lovers of exercise say walking and jogging will remain their constant habit. But for some, perhaps a national day for exercising may compel them to join. <laughs> And to entertainment now. The Director for Communications and Special Projects for Musica, Ahoma Bosco Okansi, has called for the organization of more arts festivals. He believes this will boost Ghana's entertainment industry. Arts and entertainment are a part of human existence. They are exhibited in every aspect of life. Art festivals such as Ultimate Concert, Best of Life and Tema Invasion are a few of the festivals that have celebrated the beauty of art. Though there have not been enough festivals to reward artistic works, the Director for Communications and Special Projects for Musica, Ahuma Bosco Okanse, believes it is not too late. I'm seriously convinced that um, festivals and such initiatives by the creative arts will ultimately near to the benefit of the country in terms of adding to GDP. The Hall of Fest is one of such festivals which celebrates everything arts. It brings together diverse artistic impressions from music, fashion, choreography, exhibition, masquerading and anything you can think of. At the maiden edition which was held last year at Tema, artists like Stone Boy, Sarkodie, Paterankin, D Black, Mujiz and many others pulled over 3,000 art lovers together. This year's edition will create a platform for young and upcoming artists to exhibit their talents. It will also serve as a tourist attraction for art lovers and tourists. There are a lot of talents out there that do not have the platform and so Qualifest is about giving those people one platform for them to come and then exhibit their talents. One of the upcoming artists believes the festival will help them showcase their talents. And it's benefiting us in a way that we, we, we reach our fans very easily and moreover we, we make our fans very happy. Moreover we are happy to the three-day festival dubbed Beautiful Madness will be held from the 30th of June to 2nd July with free participation for all. And that's all we have for you for now. Thanks so much for watching and happy Father's Day to all fathers out there.